Hello everyone, Front and Tips here. Welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to basically track our backend track uh, where we started with the crash course on Slim Framework. So if you looked at our um, sort of YouTube channel, you will see that we had one tutorial on Slim Crash Course. So let me let me check it out. Right here we have the Slim uh, slim uh, framework here and in this tutorial if you haven't watched it it's a necessity for uh, uh, for this uh, tutorial for today please go ahead and watch it uh, but for those of you who have watched it what we did was like we created an API using slim framework and we literally moved uh, we had a prototype before how to create an autocomplete suggestion box and we moved the logic from the front end to the back end so basically we had a logic for you know uh, when we type like A, it would show Argentina and Armenia and I, India. So it basically suggests based on the characters, suggests countries based on the characters that you typed. And if going back to the code, I can even show you what we had. We created like a directory structures, SRC public index. We installed the dependency. In this case was uh, Slim Framework and we moved the list of the countries and we created like endpoints and routes to kind of do what we want and in the front end we use the fetch api to call this passing the parameters right so now what am i going to do today the idea was like uh, i promised that we're going to create a full end-to-end -end php login sign up uh and after that we're going to do a node version uh, so today i thought about well let's move the piece that we developed for the in the first episode which was this panel to the templates in the slim framework and if you don't know what templates are i'm going to talk about it don't worry so let's get started so going back to our uh code here i'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything that we did for the previous tutorial and just uh put the main base root which is a slash which writes welcome to slim crash course from front end, uh, tips so what am i going to do what I, instead what i would like to do is instead of writing this text in the browser when i uh, hit the slash endpoint which is the root uh, or the base uri of our uh, domain or whatever you want to call it i want to just return uh, an html page right i want to show an, a proper html page if I go to Slim Framework website, let's go to Slim Framework and go to the user guide. Uh, let's go to the user guide and search for templates, right? In the templates, uh, as you can see, it says um, they use Twig View and PHP View components to help you render templates to a PSR7 response object. And PSR7 is basically a standard for the HTTP responses. Uh, if you want to read more about it, go ahead and do. It's not really necessary for this tutorial. Um, so what are we going to do is that we're going to use a templating engine called Tweak. It's actually pretty famous. It gives us a lot of possibilities when it comes to like templating um and the view part of our uh project so in order to use it it says use the composer and require a slim tweak view so i go back here making sure that i'm in the src folder and in the src folder if you have followed up the tutorial we know that we installed composer right so i'm going to basically go ahead and copy the composer require and we know that composer is actually composer far here so this basically goes ahead and installs the tweak view dependency to our project as well right so we're going to give it a little bit of a time where it goes ahead and installs and updates the dependencies that we have um, there you go and it generates all the load files so it's all good now the next thing it says is that we need to have we need to get a reference to the container of our app and container what it does it prepares and manages the dependencies for our project so here in the index.file i'm just going to say container create a uh, create a variable container and say you get the app container right 
So that's where uh, I get the container that I need. And now, how are we gonna tell it to use uh, to, uh, to use the Tweak uh, View Engine? What I'm gonna do is that on the container, uh, I'm just gonna say I want the view in the container to be a function, and as a parameter, I pass the container, right? And here what I would like to do is that I want to create a variable called view, which ultimately I return. So view is going to be equals to new slim views. And this is basically the, the dependency that we installed. So it's tweak. And then the first parameter is the path, path to wherever the uh, template files will reside. So here in the SRC folder, I'm going to create a new folder. And I will call it views, right? Um, so here I will point that because we are we are modifying the index.php file, I have to go one level up. So I'll go one level up and say, there you go. There is where my views are. And the second parameter is actually an array. Uh, in this array, you can say cache. Uh, and I would just say false for now. Uh, you this is this is when you are on a production server because we are locally I just disabled it but on a production server you want to give it a real path to a directory where your uh, template caches will reside and basically the idea is that if you have cache for your templates uh, they will basically get loaded quite faster right so now you can see that we basically uh, defined our uh, let me see, this is just JavaScript, -y, so this is how you do it in PHP. Uh, so this is how we define our views. The only thing that is needed is returning this view. So return the view. So when this function gets called, it returns the view and it will go on the view of the container. So now here instead, instead of response write, we can just return this, which this refers to the container of the app, and then view as you can see here so we get access to that and then we just call the render function here the first parameter will be response the second parameter will be the name of the template which we don't have yet for now i'm just going to call it index.html now in the views i'm going to create a new file i'm just going to call it index.html and i would just say hi let's see if this guy will work so if i go to localhost 8002 hopefully i'm just gonna say give it get a high so now you can see that we kind of managed to uh, use templates tweak templates specifically but now the idea the whole purpose is to move this piece of uh, you know code that we we've written in javascript and css and html and sort of use it in the templates and i'm going to use the index.html for now you might want to put this in another page like slash sign in or slash sign up but let's say this is just an admin sort of login where it will show up in the first page right so to be able to do that what am i going to do in the public folder and just think about it anything that should be publicly available to the user needs to be in the public folder. So index.php and defining of the routes, one of them. And then here I'm gonna create a folder called styles for my CSS styles. And I'm gonna create a new folder called scripts for the JavaScript, right? In the, C in the CSS or the styles, I'm creating a new file called main.css. Do the same thing for the styles as well. So main.js. Going back to our prototype here, I'm going ahead and I'm going to copy the CSS and paste it in the main.css like this. Uh, I can see that there was a spelling and the JavaScript here as well into the main.js in the scripts, right? So now we we are good. The final thing is to copy the content of the HTML to the index.html right now it's high now we paste this now if i go ahead and refresh the page here for localhost slash you're going to see that we only get the sort of the html markup 
Now, how are we going to handle this? Obviously, in our project, this is not going to be, slash is not going to be the first route or the only, uh, maybe the first route, but not the only route in our project, right? And we have like files like JavaScript and CSS that might actually be used in many other templates as well. To be able to handle that, we can use a nice functionality of tweak, which is extending a base layout or a base path. Uh, sorry, the base template. So here in the views, I'm going to create a new file and I will call it layout.html. And this layout will be basically the template for all the other sort of templates that I have. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to, I'm using Visual Studio Code. So in Visual Studio Code, if you do, uh, you know, the bang letter and then press tab, you'll see that it automatically inserts the snippet for the HTML body structure. I'm just going to call the title front and tips for now. And now here in the tweak, what I need to do is to in the body, I need to define a block. And the way to do that, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say block and then name, name, name it something content. You can name it body whatever, and then we're going to go ahead and close the block by calling end block, right? Now, what, is, what this means that for any template that extends this, we need to make sure we put the content or the sort of the body of that specific, you know, in this case, index.html within the block. Uh, so what I'm going to do in the index, first thing I need to do is at the top of the file, I'm going to say this uh, template extends the layout.html, right? So, so far so good. And then now, instead of putting the content right here, we actually need to define it like this. So I need to create a define. I name it content, if you remember, in the layout.html. I'm going to close it, so end block. And then here, inside it, I'm just going to paste the HTML that we had for our login sign-up panel, right? So again, we have a main uh, layout, which is a higher level layout. It uh, We put like, we define a block content, empty, nothing here. And then basically any template that extends this can override and put the, uh, to, uh, to put the specific HTML or markup that they need within that block. So now if I go ahead here and refresh, you'll see that we will get, we will still get the same thing, but now we have the possibility to extend multiple templates that we're going to have later on from the index. Now the good part here is that in the layout.html, I can now go ahead and include our styles and scripts, right? So here I can say link, and then now how are we going to reference uh, the main or the CSS or main JavaScript from the public because right now we are actually here in the views on top level but here we have the public. The way to do that, uh, we know that the public actually is the base URL of our website. So there is a handy function called base URL. So if we call base URL here and then do slash I know that it starts with slides and then main.css, right? The same thing I'm going to do for the scripts. So here at the end of the body block, I'm just going to say script src, same thing. I'm just going to do base URL. And then here I have slash scripts and then slash main.js. But now the problem is that if we run it, it will complain, I don't know what base URL is. To be able to fix that, we have to do one more thing when we define our tweak extension like this. What we need to do before returning the view is actually call view add extension. And this adds the slim extension for tweak, which is new then we do slim views and then it's going to be twig extension and this twig extension accepts two parameters the first parameter is going to be container dot 
router and this is you know used when we link to our styles and everything the second one is called container request and then get uri right so basically it gets the uri for uh it's a function so it gets a uri uh for uh it gets a uri for the request in the handler right so now everything should work fine now if i go ahead and refresh the page you will see that boom we have our beautiful style that we developed a while ago i mean beautiful let me let me be honest I, I see it beautiful you might not but i mean it's simple i like it so now you can see that we have moved the css and javascript and you know html within uh, the templates in our project so you can see that interaction works everything works so yeah so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial this is how we moved over i generally the way i do things is that i go ahead and create um you know the html and javascript and css completely in another project i call it you know my project's front end and then i have a back end and then i basically move over when i'm done with the front end javascript and css i move over that into my back end if i know i'm gonna have a server rendered project like this otherwise obviously it's a different scenario uh, where you have a front end and you have a back end and then they call they are like kind of isolated they don't really uh, sit together like their code bases do not reside together more like one both of them are two different services backend service frontend service and they use a sort of a http as a protocol to talk to each other the good example was this uh, autocomplete right that we showed this is completely two separate examples but in this case we moved the lo logic of the uh, front end as templates in the back end i hope you enjoyed this tutorial at some point i'm gonna try to make uh, repositories from these and push it to github so that you can also go ahead and enjoy using that uh, for the next couple of days i'm gonna work on uh, you know finishing and wrapping up the tutorial on how to actually do the authentication uh, basically talking to database as a prerequisite please go ahead and download the exam in your uh, computer so if i'm going to show you what it is XAMPP is sort of a installer for downloading apache friends which includes the you know apache web server and mysql server and from then on we go ahead and we create tables and all that and we create like the classes that are needed to authenticate and finally we show you how uh, we can restrict routes uh, in your uh, or basically the pages in your project so that the uh, people who are not signed in cannot see them right so great uh, i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do that i'm doing my best to provide almost all the knowledge i have to you guys um soon there are going to be more people who will join me um uh, to create even more awesome tutorials let me know if you have any questions and concerns and i wish you a good day and night see you next time